Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to start the process of installing these Super Duty axles into the Green Cherokee. <laughs> So in the last episode of the Cherokee Resurrection series, we installed the front notch custom fender flares here. And in the previous episode before that, we installed the JCR quarter panel armor to the rear of the Jeep, the upper and the lower, as well as the notch custom fender flares here in the rear. They're not done. We still have to get back to this, but we're gonna be moving forward for now. Also in the last video, we took like a weird 180 degree turn and this turned into a one ton swap. So if you're not familiar now, we're one ton swapping the Jeep. We've got a 2003 Dana 60 out of a Super Duty F350 up front, along with the Sterling 10 and a half in the rear. In this episode, we're gonna be installing the Dana 60. We're gonna be making a truss and some brackets for it because I wanna get that under the Jeep. I also, in last video, I promised coilovers and 40s and that's exactly what we did. Right here, I have a 315 7517, which is basically a 35, a brand new 37, which is the spare for my truck and then the tires that are going on the green Jeep. I got one so far because they're incredibly expensive, but this is a 40 inch tire, 40 inch, uh, 13 and a half, 17. This is what's going on the Jeep. I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> That's a massive and heavy tire. But yeah, I put them all next to each other here just so you can see like what we're coming from. This is what the green Cherokee had on it before, something a similar 35 to this and this is what we're going with. Also in the last episode, I promised coilovers. We're gonna be doing coilovers in the front of this thing. We're gonna be, as of right now, we're keeping the leaves in the back. Hopefully it stays that way, or else it's gonna just be a lot more work. But we got these. These are the Fox 2.5 14 inch coilovers. These are the same ones that we put in Jake's Jeep about a year ago in the back of his TJ, except those are 12 inch, but these are the same exact thing. They got the remote reservoir along with the adjusters on top. We got these from AccuTune. We sent in a bunch of specs on the Jeep and what it's gonna be, what the axles we're using, the tires and they valved these specifically for this Jeep. Now going into this project, I decided that I needed three things to actually start. I wanted to get that Dana 60 basically bolted into the Jeep, and like I said, to do that, I need three things. We needed a big sheet of metal because we're gonna be building the trusses, cutting them out on the CNC ourselves. We're gonna be making all of the brackets for this thing. Literally everything on this thing is gonna be hand built. It's gonna be built, cut out on the CNC and welded together by us. We also needed to buy a 40 inch tire because I needed to know basically how where the ride height of the Jeep needed to sit. So that's why I went out and just bought just 140 for now. We're gonna order the three others once we're a little closer to the end of this build. And we also needed the coilovers. So I went and bought the coilovers. So now we can basically get the front put together. So the first step to all of this is we're gonna be building the truss for the front. I'm gonna get under there. We're gonna take a bunch of measurements, hopefully draw everything out on AutoCAD with no problems. And we're gonna get it cut out on the CNC. <laughs> Everything I've built in the past, including this Cherokee, I've had two main goals. It needs to be capable while also being reliable. Those two basically speak for themselves. You want your rig to be as capable as possible and be able to take anything you throw in front of it while also being able to do that reliably. In our case, we drive this Jeep to and from wherever we wheel it. We've driven this Jeep around the entire country, thousands of miles away from home. We can't afford for anything to break or go wrong, especially when we're deep in the back country. Aside from those two goals, for this build specifically, <laughs> I have another two goals. I want to keep it wide, which I don't think we'll have a problem doing with these one tons, and I wanna keep it low very low. There's gonna be some limiting factors as to how low we can actually get to at ride height. The new Knott's Custom Fender Flares in the rear will definitely limit how far up into the wheel well that 40 will go. Now as for the truss on the Dana 60, we're gonna be doing that first today. It needs to be extremely low profile so we don't have any interference with the oil pan or the unibody. I'm using quarter inch for the side pieces and later on we'll be using 3 8 for the top plate. <laughs>
we got this piece cut out last night and this is gonna be the front part of the truss down there and this thing came out awesome. We get all of the angles inside of the truss here dead on and this thing hugs that diff down there perfectly. So this actually wasn't the first piece we cut out though. This one is perfect and this is the one that's gonna be welded onto that axle. But before that, we messed up some measurements and we cut out this piece, which is also, it was it probably would have worked, but you can see right here, it's you know, like two inches too wide here. I don't know how that measurement got messed up, but we had to go back into AutoCAD and fix the, some of those measurements. And then we ended up with this piece, which is perfect. Now the next step for this truss is we're gonna make the rear section of the truss. So like I said, this is the front piece. We need to make a rear piece. It's gonna be extremely similar to this one. So we can use the same file. We just have to go and make a few changes, especially around like where it hugs the diff here. And then once we get that cut out, we can cut out the top piece. This is going really smooth. So hopefully it stays that way. Now, before I go ahead and cut out that rear section of the truss, I'm gonna take out this axle to make it a little easier so I don't have to crawl under here every time. Before I take it out, I'm gonna make note of my pinion angle because this is the exact angle I want on it. Right now, the Jeep is where I think ride height should be. If anything, we're gonna go up another inch, maybe two but I'd like to keep it as low as possible, if possible. So we're gonna make note of this pinion angle. For a setup like this, where we're gonna be using a double carding drive shaft, at ride height, we want this pinion pointing directly at that transfer case. So that's exactly what it's doing right now. So I'm gonna make note of this, exactly what the angle is, using this angle finder. And we're gonna find a flat spot. This is the old leaf spring mount. That might be the best spot. We can go right there, that's 85.5, so I'll make note of that. I'll also, you know what, I'll actually measure this as well. So the pinion's at 87 degrees. So I'm gonna make note of those two angles, 87 degrees over here, it was, it's actually about 87 and a half, and then 85 and a half over here at the leaf spring mount. I'm gonna pull the axle out, position it at that angle, and then when we go to tack on the truss, I want that to be zero degrees, so we have a nice flat surface to weld our mounts and whatnot onto. So now that I'm looking at this, I had this zeroed going at 90 degrees, so that's why I had those weird measurements, 87 and 85. That's fine, but since I re-zeroed it, we're gonna redo this. It's at now at four degrees over here, and right here, it's at three degrees. So I'm gonna take note of those measurements. The rear section of this truss is gonna be extremely similar to the front. Basically, all that has to be done is I need to add some material around the diff. It's just slightly skinnier back here, and we should be good. I'm gonna be able to use the same Fusion 360 file as the front. I just gotta make a few changes to the measurements, and like I said, we should be good to cut it out. All right, I have the front piece of the truss resting on the rear, so we can take some measurements and make some changes. You can see how it doesn't quite fit around the, the diff right here and on this side as well. So I'm gonna take some measurements. We're gonna add a lot of metal here, some here, just basically anywhere it's not like this close. We want it this close so we can weld to it. Obviously we can't fill in something like this with all weld. But other than that, it, it still looks good all along there. We're gonna make some changes right to here. I'm gonna add a lot more metal here. Basically, we're just making changes so this fits a lot better. Working on projects like this is my absolute favorite. Designing something from scratch, getting it cut out and welded up is a very rewarding thing to do. This is definitely one of the bigger projects I've taken on. I built many suspensions before, but my goal for this project is to build as much as I possibly can. I want every single part and piece below the unibody of this Jeep to be fabricated in-house. That's why I'm building the truss. Trusses are very cheap. I think an Artec truss for this Dana 60 is about $300. I can spend some time designing my own, spend much less than $300, and in the end, I'll have the satisfaction that I built this part exactly how I wanted it. That goes for every part and piece we're gonna be making this series. They will be fabricated specifically for this setup and this Jeep. In the end, I already know there's gonna be about 100 things I wish I did differently, but you know, that goes for every build. You're gonna wish you bent that piece a little less or added some metal here or there, but that just gives you all the more reason to save those ideas for your next build. All right, that, that looks really good. That was a really clean cut. Hopefully that's what we were looking for. This rear section came out great. It hugs the diff just like the front piece perfectly. Now we can move on to the top plate. Nice. <laughs> Look at that, that looks freaking awesome. 
I did a little bit of persuading to this rear piece. I had to you can kind of see I took a flap disc to right here and a few spots over there just so it kind of pushed in a little bit and more on top of the tubes. And then I wanted a little bit more of this leaf spring mount showing and it's perfectly lined up. They're both like perfectly straight. It's looking good. It's a little wide. I tried, originally when I was designing it and taking measurements, I wanted it slightly, like them both slightly in the tube. So it wasn't wider than the tube. I don't think it's gonna be wider than the tube. It's gonna be like literally the same width, but that'll be all right. I mean, it's gonna be a little wide, but that's fine. It's gonna be strong, if anything. So now we need to go ahead and measure for a top plate, and that's probably gonna be a lot of work. Fabricating the top plate of this truss is gonna be the most challenging part of this build so far. You'll see why, but if I mess it up, it's gonna cost me quite a bit. So far with this truss, everything is made out of quarter inch. I've used quarter inch for just about everything on our Dana 30s and our 488s on the other Jeeps outside. Everything is quarter inch. If you go on Artec or say Barnes, everything you're gonna find for those smaller axles, I mean, from what I've seen at least, is gonna be quarter inch. I was on Artec and I noticed on the one ton stuff for their Dana 60s, the 14 bolts and the Sterling 10 and a half that we have, the trusses that they make for that, the top plate, it's all quarter inch, but the top plate is actually made out of three eighths for an Artec truss and on Barnes, I'm pretty sure it's five sixteenths is the top plate. So we're gonna follow their logic and we're gonna make our top plate out of three eighths as well. Now I didn't buy a piece of three eighths though. We have a piece right over here. So this is a truck frame out of a, like a big 18 wheeler, if you will. Got it out of a dumpster at one point, never thought I would use it because 3 8 is incredibly huge. I didn't think I'd ever have to make something out of 3 8 but this should work perfectly for our top plate. Now we don't have enough, if we mess up once, then we're gonna be screwed because we have probably enough for the front of front, the Dana 60 and probably enough for the rear for the 10 and a half uh, Sterling. So hopefully we don't mess this up. That's it. So we actually might not have enough for both trusses. We'll see. It's just because of how we have to cut this. You can see right here, we're gonna have to cut off the edges of the frame so we have a nice flat piece to work with. So when we go to cut the actual top plate for the truss, this, these uh, side pieces aren't interfering with our cut. So we're gonna try to cut this right now. We're gonna have to make a few cuts and move the piece a few times, but I think we'll be able to do it. It's too bad. I was hoping I was gonna be able to use this piece for the front and the rear trusses, but because of how tall the sides are and how we're gonna to have to initially cut it because of that, we're probably only gonna have enough for the Dana 60. Now, this was a free piece, so I guess I can't complain all that much. It is what it is. Once we move onto the rear Sterling 10 and a half truss, I'll just have to go buy a small sheet of some 3 8 It's very loud in here. I don't know if you can hear me all that great. We've got the compressor going, got this cotton. It's looking so good. Nice straight cut. Nice. It's, it's too bad that we couldn't bring it closer, but you can see, you can see the clearances we're working with. See between the frame and the machine, it's very close. All right, I take back what I said earlier. We're only gonna have enough, if we don't mess this up, for the Dana 60. We're not gonna have enough for the 10 and a half for the top plate, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right now, we're just focusing on the Dana 60 top plate. So hopefully, I drew this out right, and hopefully we bend it right and all that. This is all that I was left with after cutting that frame up, just this small piece. I had to chop off some of the end and I cut it in wrong, uh, wrong spot, so I ended up with two pieces. So that's definitely not enough for the 10 and a half, but like I said, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's see how this comes out. Let me know down in the comments below if you all want me to make a video a little more in depth on the process of drawing up a piece and getting it cut out on the CNC. There's a ton that goes into it and it could be its own video altogether.
That was by far the gnarliest cut I've ever made <laughs> with this CNC. Compressor just kicked on. I've never cut some that slow and I've never cut anything that thick. So it looks pretty good, hopefully it's right. It actually cut out really nice and straight. That machine cut out 3 8 no problem. I'm pretty surprised about that. It's only rated for up to 3 8 so I'm sure if we wanted to, we could go a little thicker. Now, there is a lot going on up here. What these little rectangles are for is so I can weld through to the side pieces, but I kind of messed up the side pieces and I had to add a few more on the top here, but that's fine. They're gonna all get welded up. they will be stronger, if anything. This big hole is for the breather for the axle. It was in a good location, so I just made access to it. And then we got a few other random holes that were already on the frame, so those we can end up closing up. Now the next thing we gotta do to this is make about four bends, and it's gonna be tough, because I, I really don't wanna mess it up. I think what's gonna happen is I'll work my way from the middle and go out, and we'll start with the shorter side first. But yeah, let's give it a shot, and let's break out the bender. Bending this up actually went very smoothly. It only took about an hour. One thing I need to do in the future though is get the air hooked up to this press so I don't have to do this all by hand. It definitely takes more time. All right, here's our finished product for the top plate. It came out amazing. I'm really happy with it. We put five bends in this piece. We got one, two, three, four, five, and we worked our way, if I remember correctly, from this way over to the long side. And everything fits in really tight. You can see the top plate right here fits in really good with the front and the same thing with the rear right there. Now, I didn't think of this until now, but mounting a lower control arm mount on this driver's side is gonna be a challenge. You can see I don't have much tube to work with. I gotta see what people, I gotta look it up, see what people do about this. But I think what's gonna happen on this, and I should have done it before, is I'm gonna have to cut off some of this casting here. I can't go any further than these plug welds right here but I think I'm gonna end up opening this up just a little bit down here and that'll make a good location for my lower control amount over here and over there, it won't be an issue. But yeah, I'll do some research. We'll get this axle positioned under the Jeep and we'll figure out what exactly what we're gonna do. Over the next day, I did some research and thinking and I found that others will cut off about two inches of the cast section all the way around and it leaves you with about three to three and a half inches of tube showing, which is then enough room to get a control arm bracket in there. Now, if I were to do that, my truss isn't going to fit correctly anymore. I'll either have to cut new side pieces or add some filler metal to the existing truss. After a lot of debate, I decided to cut off the two inches of cast all the way around and cut out new side pieces. This is without a doubt the right way to do this. It kills me that I didn't do this earlier because now I'm wasting metal, but we're gonna do this right. There's no other option. This is what happens when you fabricate. Things will get messed up. It's the name of the game. Now I know for next time and this won't happen again. I was, I was pretty frustrated when I realized I did this and pretty embarrassed that I didn't think of this, but it is what it is. I got the new side pieces cut out, got the axle under the Jeep, and now we can move on. The clearance is are very tight down here. This truss is pretty close to the oil pan, but compared to my red Jeep out there with the Dana 30, we're really not all that close, so I'm not too worried about that. That's what the bump stops are gonna be for. If anything, we might need to go up with the body a little up front. In the rear, I know we're gonna have to at least go at least one or two inches, so we'll see. I kinda wanna keep the body where it's at, up in the front at least, but you know, we're gonna have to do what we have to do. Now this truss is all tacked together. It's tacked to itself. It's not tacked to the axle yet though. So later on, once this axle comes out, we can take the truss off. We can weld the tubes up on this. I got a few more pieces I wanna make for the truss for some supports, and then we can get it all welded together. But for now, we put it back under here and got it all squared under the Jeep so we can build some control arm mounts. We need to build two lowers and an upper right here on top of the diff. It's gonna be a three link and we're gonna be able to use the cross member that's already in the Jeep. That's pretty convenient. It's a little less work that we have to do right now. I'm gonna start with the upper control arm mount and basically I just need to build it as low profile as I can so we don't have any interference or anything up top here, which we probably will <laughs> because there's a lot for it to hit. And then I'm gonna work my way to the lower control arm mounts. For time's sakes, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and not do much filming when I'm building the control arms. We can come back to them and we'll talk about them afterwards. I'll tell you exactly why I did what I did with them and you know how I went about building them. This thing came out good though. I'm really happy with it. It looks good under the Jeep. Anyways, let's get to work.
We now have control arm mounts. I ran out of welding gas as soon as I tacked on that last bracket. I knew I was running low. I didn't quite know I was that low. So I'm gonna have to go get some more welding gas before we can continue. At least we had enough to get done what we needed to. I started with the upper control arm mount. This upper mount, it, it's pretty simple. It's just three pieces. And instead of designing it with circles like I usually do, this one I did a diamond and then some triangles on the side. That's just for aesthetics. I, I think it looked pretty nice. Also, the third piece that connects the two outer pieces, I recessed into the bracket. I've seen a couple of other guys doing that online. I thought it looked really nice, so that's why I did it. Pretty simple bracket. I made it as low profile as I could. It's still three and a half inches tall, but it needs to be that tall so the Johnny joint doesn't interfere with the truss. Now the lowers, they were very interesting to make. The passenger and the driver's side brackets, those four pieces of the metal are exactly the same. Although on the driver's side, the inside piece of metal, the inside of the bracket, I had to bend outward instead of inward like the rest of them, just so we can fit it on that three, three and a half inch section of tube. It's a very small space to work with, but this bracket is gonna work for that. There's also gonna be a top plate that I'm gonna tie into the truss for those lowers. And then on the bottom, there will be a piece of metal on each of them that ties into the tube. We got a ton done this video. It's actually looking like we're making progress. This is really cool. Next video, I'm not sure entirely what we're gonna be able to get done. I'd love to get the coil overs in. It's gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna have to build some towers and some lower brackets on that truss but we'll, we'll get it done. Expect that next video. We'll try to get as much of that done as possible and we'll get the coilovers in the Jeep. Once again, this is part three of the Cherokee Resurrection series. You can go back into the playlist that this video is on and you can watch parts one and two just to catch up if you haven't. The goal is to come out with a video every single Wednesday until this Jeep pulls out of this garage and back onto the trail. I'm having a lot of fun doing this and I really wanna keep it up. If you all enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think of the series so far. Let me know exactly what you want to see. We're going to be doing a lot to this Cherokee. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll see y'all on the trail and I'll see you next time. <laughs>